Hey everyone, Motorola has been focusing on budget and mid-range phones for the past couple of years, but striking the right balance between budget and features doesn't seem to get any easier with each new generation. So now that they've released the Moto G9 Plus, how does this phone stack up to the rest of the market? I'm Angie for GSM Arena, and these are the key features of the Moto G9 Plus. Looks-wise, the phone doesn't hold too many surprises and it looks similar to Moto phones from last year. Except, this time around, the camera bump is a little wider. We have the indigo blue version of the phone, but it also comes in rose gold. The phone has a unibody plastic chassis while the front is glass. We are a little disappointed because Motorola phones from Gen 7 had Gorilla Glass on both sides, while Gen 9 and 8 have been downgraded to plastic. It shouldn't be any less durable though, and if you're more cautious, you can always use the case included in the box. It's not the thinnest phone we've used in recent times, and at 223 grams, it's a little heavy. But it's not unwieldy, and thanks to gesture navigation, you probably won't have difficulty using it one-handed on occasion. There's also a side-mounted fingerprint reader, which works well. The phone has a 6.8-inch IPS LCD with a hole punch in the top left corner. It's an uninspired choice at this price considering you can get some competitors with really good AMOLED screens with high refresh rates for the same amount of money. Still, it's a large screen and most users won't have any issues with it, especially if they're coming from an older device. As far as audio is concerned, there's actually a downgrade from the previous generation. There's a single downward-facing speaker instead of stereo speakers. At least the phone has our favorite legacy port, the headphone jack. It supports FM radio too, which is nice if you're already using wired headphones. The Moto G9 uses the power-efficient Snapdragon 730G chipset, which is the same as what you'll find in the Redmi K20 or the Galaxy A80. It also comes with 128GB of base storage, which is plenty for most users. We wish it came with more RAM though, since it's limited to 4GB. Still, that should be enough for most daily use and occasional gaming. Actually, where the phone seems to be really promising is the endurance. At 500 milliamp hours, its battery is massive, and it seems to be a good combo with the already power-efficient chipset. Charging is no slouch either, with a 30-watt fast charger included in the box. Motorola phones are loved for their near-stock Android, and this one is no different. It has Android 10 with the Moto app available if you want to activate or deactivate certain Moto gestures. Really, aside from the color of the notification toggles, the Moto app and the camera app, you'll be getting Android as Google intended. As for the cameras on the back, it's a quad camera setup. There's a 64 megapixel quad Bayer main sensor, an 8 megapixel ultrawide camera, a 2 megapixel macro cam, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. The latter two aren't very interesting, but the main camera natively outputs 16 megapixel photos, and Motorola is boasting of better night vision capabilities, so we're sure to test that out. The ultra-wide was a not-so-nice surprise since it has been downgraded from the 16-megapixel snapper in the previous generation to the current 8-megapixel one. We'll also test out the front camera, which is a 16-megapixel snapper with an f2.0 aperture. This is more than enough for a good selfie. So far, the phone seems to be targeted at the sort of person who wants a functional device with a battery that lasts ages. Yes, the plastic back is irksome and the screen is far from impressive, but the chipset is a good one, the software is incredibly light, and of course, the battery is huge. This is a first look though, and we're gonna need some more in-depth testing to see just how good the cameras are and if that battery actually lives up to its promise. So stay tuned everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.